started. Uh, so welcome. Uh, I, I wanted to offer just a couple of announcements. Uh, so uh, number one, uh, I did, uh, as many of you know from my uh, emails, I did post the new um, a problem, problem set, that new assignment. And um, your knowledge uh, should be sufficient to allow you to take on the first several, uh, several questions of that, the first two in particular. Um, in order to speed you on your way to answer the latter two, questions three and four, um, I've rearranged things a little bit uh, in terms of the uh, lecture sequence. Uh, so we're actually diving into the material on system dynamics uh, modeling and, and uh, some of the core concepts there uh, in order to speed up uh, exposure to the material suitable for exploring um, questions three and four. I will note for the enterprising amongst you um, that all the videos for this class uh, for previous sessions like in 2017, 2016, uh, I believe 15 and 14 as well, um, should be available online through my YouTube channel. And I will endeavor, um, and uh, if I'm not too over overloaded in office hours, I will commit to, uh, to getting the playlists for those posted. Um, so that you could avail yourselves of, of those slides. That would allow you to easily take on the, the remaining problems. But we should get to, to that materials very soon, uh, potentially uh, for problem three as soon as next week. Um, but uh, I'm trying to speed that process up. So that's one issue. Um, a second issue is uh, I did post um, a, a later arriving um, project uh, idea, which is is in there involving the Yukon, and uh, it's with the government of Yukon and a colleague at uh, Yukon University has who has experience with uh, any logic agent-based modeling and and um, pursued a dissertation around uh, agent-based modeling uh, here in um, in the JSGS uh, in governmental studies. Um, and if anyone's still shopping around for projects, um, uh, that one has some things to recommend it. Um, uh, in terms of other items, uh, I did post a video uh, link uh, for your exploration in the next week. Um, I'm gonna ask you to, to go through that and there's gonna follow in short order, a set of other videos um, for you to explore, which will serve to complement um, coverage within uh, here in class. Um, so just bear in mind that it will be good to, to get started in the one I, I did share because a couple others will be um, starting uh, in short order. And I'll be looking to you to review those uh, so that we, um, we can offload some material from, from class, uh, from our formal, formal interactive lectures. Okay, um, now um, uh, today, as I indicated, we're gonna be jumping into uh, stock and flow modeling um, using uh, system dynamics. And to that end, uh, I had asked all of you to come to this session with, um, with any logic up and running. Uh, I will be sharing my screen, um, which uh, I will seek to, uh, to, uh, to use to to walk you through uh, some of the mechanics involved, but uh, you know you're uh, you're all mature enough students, overwhelmingly computer science students, um, and this class is not a training class. So I, I will be um, expecting a certain degree of maturity and, and um, initiative in uh, learning how to use the package by itself. Uh, if you uh, get stuck, um, if you need more help, uh, there's a fulsome help system. And um, uh, if you go and you search online, there's plenty of online material, um, much of which um, uh, will, uh, will lead you to encounter the, uh, the great misfortune of a step-by-step -step guidance by none other than the current speaker. Um, and uh, you may wish to uh, make... Uh, uh, enjoyed recourse to that material as well. That is uh, very tutorial and it will walk you through systematically the steps um, that we'll be, uh, be rushing through here. But um, 
just as we asked for some problem projects, you know, that you learn a programming language or that you um, you uh, learn your way around Eclipse or, or other uh, packages, uh, you should be able to, to learn your way around uh, any logic software. And there's plenty of prostheses for those who have um, who have challenges or plenty of, of assistance, I should say. I mis misapplied the word. Okay, um, so uh, get your any logic uh, called up here though, so that we can get started. And I'm going to switch to screen sharing. Um, so uh, I'm going to uh, go over to my uh, slides and uh, we'll just make some uh, introductory remarks and we'll dive in uh, within uh, a minute or two um, to the package. So today we're gonna to be going through um, uh, a set of materials that are introductory in stocks and flows. And we'll see how far we get. Um, uh, we're gonna go through the basics of stocks and flows um, and by extension, the basics of um, use of any logic with stock and flow models and more broadly with, uh, with models of, uh, of multiple sorts of, of, of many types of dynamic modeling tradition. Um, our goal is by the end of today's lecture to try to get through this key higher level building block, a building block um, that incorporates stocks and flows, those lower level building blocks, but, uh, but uses it to incorporate a key element central to the purpose of system dynamics to wit feedback. And uh, it also demonstrates accumulation and a carry through from uh, our very first openings before feedback. So just, just to sort of uh, put us uh, in the right mindset and um, offer uh, to, to bring to mind again, some of the salient features within uh, system dynamics models and stock and flow models in particular, um, Stocks and flows are the basic building blocks. Stocks represent the state of the system at any one time. At any one time, the complete state of the system is summarized by the values of those stocks. And uh, if you were to you know, be in the midst of running a simulation and you needed to shut down your computer for some reason and resume it later, all you'd need to do is remember the time at which you stopped and the value of each of the stocks and you could plug those values in and uh, off to the races to continue it. That's what I mean by it's the complete state of the system. It's the complete situation of the system at any one time that's summarized in that stocks. All information from the past is mediated by those stocks and uh, the stocks will drive the evolution of the system uh, going forward. Um, stocks have an initial value at the start of simulation, but after that, their evolution their behavior is governed, ladies and gentlemen, by flows. Flows are the verbs in the system, if stocks are the nouns. Flows capture um, changes in the system, occurrence of and rates of that change. Um, and typically, and we'll see some exceptions to it in our um, you know, baby steps, but Typically, the value of the flows at any one time is set by the values of the stocks. Flows accumulate in the stocks over time. Stocks accumulate the value of the flows, but, but at any one time, the value of the flows is dictated uh, by, by stocks typically. Um, and that was part of our definition of a dynamical system. A dynamical system, this is a system that has state and where the evolution of that system is dependent on that state. To put it another way, per David Jazz Myers, a, a dynamic system specifies how things are, or, 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 or can be, and how things change based on how they are right now. Um, and that's in contrast to systems that exhibit the same behavior, regardless of what's going on now, they exhibit the same, say, randomness in the next little bit. Um, here we're dealing with, with uh, systems, regardless of modeling language, uh, regardless whether using agent-based modeling, system dynamics modeling, uh, discrete event simulation, some hybrid between them, how they evolve in the next little bit is dependent on, on their current state. 
Okay, so here, how they evolve in the next little bit is deterministic, and it's based on the value of the state, which is encoded in these diagrams by stocks. Okay, now, um, stocks, for their evolution, I had indicated they depend on the flows. The How a stock changes in the next little bit depends on the values of flows into and out of it. And specifically, and mark my words, this is an extraordinarily important point. And it's a point with deep intuition behind it and very powerful intuition if you can internalize it. Is that a stock for its evolution will depend on the values of those flows and how it trends upwards, downwards, flat, will depend on the relative value of those flows, and particularly the net flow. Sum of flows in minus the sum of flows out, okay? Um, so we have a certain number of flows that come into the stock and a certain number of flows that go out of the stock. And the key quantity here is the net flow. It's a sum of all these flows into and out of a stock. Um, so it's inflows minus outflows, where that inflows is the sum of the inflows, outflows is the sum of the outflows. And here's the deal. If you have things coming in faster than they're going out, the value of the stock will be rising. Think about your bathtub with water coming in faster than it's leaving. Maybe your drain is clogged. Maybe you have the stopper on it. Um, but if if water's coming in faster than it's leaving, you know, you have you have uh, 20 liters a minute coming in and, and you have five liters a minute uh, going out, the value of that water in that tub, the stock, the value of the stock will be rising over time. Conversely, you know, if if you turn off the water and all you have is flow out, or if the water's flowing out faster than it's coming in, the value of water, the the amount of water in that tub will be going down. The value of the stock will be declining. And if you're in that, that very um, balanced situation, that situation of balance where the inflow equals the outflow, then you know you're, you're, as soon as water goes out, it's replaced by water coming in, so to speak. Um, there's no net change in the, the height of the water. It'll stay the same amount of water, same amount of water in the stock, whether it's the same water, whether it's the same molecule of water is, is immaterial from the standpoint of system dynamics. It's just dealing with the amount of, of um, amount of it, the quantity of it. And we abstract away from, we hide the details of whether it's the same or different. This is an important point we'll come back to quite a lot and an important distinction from individual-based modeling traditions where we care a lot. Is that the same person who's still sick with COVID who was sick three weeks ago? Is that the same person with long COVID who had it a year ago? Um, those, those questions are, are really front and center in, in individual-based modeling traditions, but here we're just dealing with the, the aggregate. We're dealing with the, the total, um, the total amount in that in that bathtub. And what the stock does is it accumulates the net flow over time. It integrates at a technical sense the net flow over time. The net flow is the derivative of the stock in a mathematical sense. And the stock is the integral. It accumulates in a continuous way. You can think of it as summing it up. In a, in, a, in a continuous way, uh, the value of the net flow. And we'll see this. So to illustrate this, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to ask you to go through an exercise here in any logic with me, okay? Um, so uh, to do this, uh, we're going to create a, a new model. And I'm going to switch over here to my any logic. Can you see my any logic? Yes, yes we can. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So when you call up any logic, you may be in a state like this with a welcome screen. If you are, you can 
minimize it over here. And you'll probably see something like this. Um, and this is an Eclipse-based framework. If you've worked with Eclipse uh, before, such as in some of your uh, starting courses, uh, it may feel familiar to you. And if so, it's with good reason. So I'm gonna say new model. Um, and I'm going to say um, uh, simplest stock and flow. Um, and I'll say 394, okay? Um, uh, you just have to type that. And then I'm gonna ask you to choose the model time units. That's kind of our yardstick of time. It's what does one mean? Um, so here, what I'm saying, let one unit of time mean months, okay? This is different from time step. It's not saying it jumps from month to month in some disconnected way. No, 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 no. It's, 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 it's just our point of reference. It's, it's what does uh, one mean? Does it mean one second, one microsecond, one year? Um, so here we're gonna have one mean one month, okay? And I'm gonna say finish. And it's gonna create for me a model and, and do some frobbery. Um, I'm just gonna go back to projects. You'll notice that these multiple tabs here, uh, you're big boys and girls, you can figure out your way around. But if you go to, um, uh, to projects, you'll see the structure. Um, so there's a main class and then there's, some ex there's an experiment class marked with an X. Okay, um, we're going to build up structure here that is going to live in Maine, okay? Um, uh, so if you, if you look, Maine should be up here. If it's not, double click on it. Um, I'm not gonna go through most sessions with this level of excruciating detail, but I want you to follow along here for the first time. Okay, um, now we're gonna drop things in from this palette and the palette is many particular tabs associated with different needs. One of those tabs is system dynamics. Um, and uh, I'd ask you to, to, to click on that tab so you, so you see the palette of paints available for system dynamics. And not surprisingly, they are most focally um, centered on stocks and flows, but there's a variety of others that we will uh, come to explore in various capacities. Okay, so I am going to drag in here, uh, click here and drag in a stock, okay? And I'm going to call it people. Now this is, an, this is a Java variable name. So it you can't put spaces in it, but I'll say, you know, people with diabetes, okay? Um, it's gonna be um, individuals who are, uh, who, who, who uh, have, have, uh, have diabetes. And uh, there's going to be an inflow and there's going to be an outflow. Um, but we're first gonna just experiment with an inflow and talk about this notion of accumulation. What does it mean to accumulate, okay? So just going back here, we have people with, with diabetes and I'd like to set it to an initial value of 10,000, okay? Um, okay, uh, so Remember, stocks, you only have to specify initial value. And you may say, well, why is it gonna have any dynamics? Well, it's dynamics you're just gonna depend on the flows. And right now there are no, are no flows into it. So we're gonna need to add a flow to make it at all interesting. Otherwise it's just gonna sit at this initial value for the fullness, ladies and gentlemen of time. So this is uh, 10,000 people with diabetes. We're gonna drag in a flow here. Now, how did I do that? I, I clicked here and I dragged it in. Make sure that tip of that flow, which you notice is white here, it turns green by docking with this um, uh, people with diabetes, okay? And uh, I'm gonna call this, it, it technical term for it is incident cases or incident, um, um, I'll just call it new, new cases of diabetes, okay? Um, uh, and we could quibble about whether they're always cases, so maybe undiagnosed, but we'll just uh, use that term, okay? Um, so by dragging that flow in and docking it, this stock knows that it accumulates the value of 
of this flow. Um, the net flow of the stock is just the value of this flow. So with new case of diabetes, I'm going to go and I'm going to set it to 100. Okay. Now this is a bit of a departure from normal practice because normally we uh, we have values of flows that depend on the values of stock, but here we're going to just have it be a fixed flow, and we're going to see the dynamics that is so induced. Okay. And it's going to show this, this principle, demonstrate this principle that the stock accumulates the net flow over time. I told you it was like summing it up, but it's summing it up in a continuous way. Because um, we don't just have you know, fixed amounts coming in at each particular, uh, um, you know, at, at month one, some fixed amount, month two, some fixed amount, rather all through the months it's coming in. Okay. Um, so our, our people with diabetes. And if, if we got to run this model right now, well, if, if you, by the way, if you look at this, the stock, it, it knows, okay, D, D stock DT, D people with diabetes DT equals new cases of diabetes. Um, it serves to, to integrate. Its derivative is, is this, the net flow, and, and this is integrated by the stock. Let's, let's just go and, and run this thing, okay? Um, so I'm going to go to the experiment. Experiment is, is where you're actually going to run scenarios. And I'm going to right click on it and say run. Okay. And here we go. And you'll see it should be off to the races there. Um, should be accumulating. And you'll notice it's, it's plodding along. It's not going at, at uh, full speed, but it's increasing. Okay. Um, if you go and you click this panel over here to the right, you can see how far into the simulation has this model reached at this point. It's, it's time 28 months or time 30 months, et cetera. Um, and you'll notice time is ticking along in kind of a fine grained way. If I click on this, um, it'll show me the current value. But if I click this uh, little graph, it'll actually show me what's going on with it. And what you'll see is that over time, the value is going up in a in a fashion that's that's diagonal. This is it's accumulating the amount. A hundred a hundred people develop diabetes per month, and so each little month you come out here, we're up to about month sixty, about five years. Um, it's accumulating more and more, and it's accumulating in this linear way. Um, all through the month, people are coming in at uh, at a certain rate, and that rate is 100 per month. Um, that's a continuous rate. They're coming in all through the month, okay? Um, and you see it rising um, in this continuous way, reflecting it. This is what you expect if you're dealing with something whose derivative is a constant, here 100, it's going to be rising like this. The integral of a constant is a, is a linear value alpha times x. If, if the derivative is, is alpha, then you integrate it, you get alpha x. Uh, the derivative of alpha x is alpha. If you take its derivative dx, here it's dt, time. Time is the, the relevant variable. Okay, um, so the derivative of the stock per unit time, the, the rate at which it's changing is given by new, uh, new cases of diabetes by this variable here. And not surprisingly, it rises. If we were to change new cases of diabetes to be uh, 200, it would end up rising faster. But this is kind of awkward. We can, we can kind of go look at these things and plot them out, but it's kind of awkward. Um, let's do something a little bit better. And I'm, this is just to, to make it easier for us to do these examples. Again, you can find just huge numbers of lectures and me walking people through this. Um, Okay, so I'm gonna go down to the analysis tab and I'm gonna drag in from the analysis tab. This, this one here was what looks like a plot. I'm gonna drag in a, um, a time. I meant to drag in time plot, not time color plot. Okay, there we go. Um, here's, our, uh, here's our time plot, okay? Um, and uh, I'm gonna drag it out here. And uh, this is going to show us in a more convenient way the value uh, of the stock. Okay, um, 
because these are on incommensurate uh, uh, time uh, or scales, uh, it's not going to be so convenient. What the heck? Let's change this from 10,000. Change it down to um, uh, change it down to be an initial value of uh, 500. Okay, then we could view them on the same same plot. So we have 500 initial people with diabetes and, and 100 per month. So I'm going to go here to this plot. So I changed the initial value of this to 500. I'm going to go to this plot, and I'm going to tell it, hey, plot out people with diabetes and new cases of diabetes. Okay. So here we go. Um, so the first uh, title here will be uh, people with diabetes. It's going to be a count. And the value of it, what value is it going to use for that? We have to tell it how to, you know, how to get that value. I'll type people with diabetes. And I'm going to do um, autocomplete by doing control space. I know it's sort of weirdly truncated here. Any logic support of Linux is kind of a bit lame sometimes, and it makes this uh, contracted in this way. I'll, I'll have to see how to frob it to, to get it from, um, from doing this. Those of you on a Mac, I think it's like alt option space or, or some, some key like that on, on uh, on PCs, Linux, uh, PCs, uh, Windows boxes, it's control space. So you start typing a control space, whatever it is in Eclipse. Um, this is after all Eclipse. Okay, so here we have uh, that, that plotted. Um, and we're gonna add one more thing here too. We're gonna uh, ask it to plot new, new cases of diabetes. Mm -hmm. And we'll do the same autocomplete trick there and it's plotting. There are under bars here, you just can't see them. Um, they're kind of peeking out there, okay? Um, so here uh, we can build it. That's what, whoa, whoa, no, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to press this. This is the build, yeah, sure. It says build completed successfully. It's a happy camper, okay? And I'll run it for a hundred, time units, okay? Um, uh, 100 months in this case, because the time unit of the model is, is months. So I'm gonna go run this thing. Let's go, go run this. Um, and what you'll see is that as the model runs, you have this, um, you have this successive uh, plotting of both the flow and the stock. And not surprisingly, what you see is that the, the flow, that's the flow in here, is fixed at 100. You can kind of zoom in on it here. But the stock, the value of the stock is rising linearly. And, you know, it starts at 500 and then it rises linearly because the flow is fixed. And that's what you expect with a fixed flow. Um, look, even if it even if all those people came in only at the beginning of the month and you kind of zoomed out a bunch, that's kind of what you'd expect, right? You'd get 500 people at time zero. If they all came in at the beginning of month one, you'd get 600 people at that time. And then you get 700 people, then you get 800 people, 900 people. It's gonna rise in a line. It's gonna rise you know, in, in a progression, but here they're coming in all through the month. So the smoothness of that line is especially marked. Okay. Um, okay. So, you know, not a lot of, of um, uh, newness here, but um, this will set us up for more interesting experiments. Okay. So I'm running it out to time 30 and you notice by time 30, it's at up to about 3,500, right? Not surprisingly, because that's 500, the initial value of the stock plus 30 times 100. 3,000, so it's 500 plus 3,000 or 3,500, right? Now, if we were to halve this, if we were to have, um, to have the new cases of diabetes, for example, here, um, and we were to make it, um, you know, 50 instead, oh, 50, um, you could bet that the accumulation will be, uh, will be different, right? Um, so we will run it again for 30 months. 
and uh, here we go. I, I press pause. I'm going to speed it up here. You could speed it up with that and you can make it go full tilt um, with this guy here, this virtual mode. Okay, so after about 30 months, it's only up to about time 2000, which stands to reason, right? It's 500 plus 30 times 50, right? Um, or 1,500, total them up, you get about 2000. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm running it out and you can see that. And this is getting tedious, right? We're going and we're, we're frobbing this, this value here. Let's stick a parameter in. Um, you know, with computer, as computer scientists, to have dignity, ladies and gentlemen, we look for opportunities to abstract, to find common patterns that we can capture once instead of brutally undertaking the same actions every time. So I'm going to go add in, and, and this, this lives in multiple palettes. Uh, it lives in the system dynamics palette. It lives in the agent palette. Um, there's a parameter. Okay. Um, now a parameter is going to communicate information to this to this model in this case domain, but it's also going to, um, uh, to to allow us to impose assumptions about it. So I'm going to make the parameter here. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll say uh, inflow. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What am I doing here? Inflow, inflow rate. Okay. There we go. The parameter is called inflow rate. And I'm going to set a default value. If I don't specify any other, I'll set it to, to uh, 100. OK. Um, so we'll see the, the virtue of this later. But um, here, we could go back to our, to our flow. And, and instead of having flow depend on some hardwired value, some hard-coded value, which is fragile, often inscrutable, um, subject to forgetting to change it. It doesn't capture the commonality between that uh, multiple values that are conceptually linked in many places in the model. Um, we'll instead put inflow rate here, okay? Um, inflow rate there. Um, oh my gosh, it's, it's uh, uh, most unhappy. Uh, oh, what am I doing? Okay. Um, Okay, new cases of diabetes, yes. Uh, inflow rate is used, but not expected. Okay, this is, um, this is most, uh, most interesting. And uh, I'm wondering, am I mistyping it? Um, uh, okay, so we have inflow rate. Uh, oops, inflow, inflow rate. Okay, um, here we go. And why is it not? Um, I'm why also getting the same thing. Okay, why is it indicating? Oh, I know. Oh, of course, it's stupid. Uh, sorry. Each system dynamics package has its own foibles. This one forces you to bow to the, or genuflect as it will, as it were, to the um, to the system dynamics convention of linking things up, and it complains otherwise. There we go. Pull in a link and put the link to indicate that the inflow rate influences that. There you go. And it's one happy camper with a capital H and I might add, ladies and gentlemen, a capital C. Um, so in addition to having this inflow rate, in order to refer to it here, it says you have to show that there's a dependence here via this link. So you pull that in and you say, okay, there's a, there's a dependence. This depends on that and it becomes a happy camper through your genuflection. And this allows you then to run, um, to run the models because generally when any logic is a happy camper, you can be a happy camper, okay? So uh, I'm gonna run it. And, um, and now we have this, uh, this inflow rate, which uh, you know, we can actually uh, you know, see its current value. You can also modify it. Um, which is, is kind of nifty. I'm gonna continue to run it here so you can see the stately progression. And I'm gonna change this to be you know, 500 per month. And suddenly you see a kink in that curve because now it's rising you know, much faster. 
tell me, ladies and gentlemen, um, from the wisdom of your collective brains, what will happen if I set this to zero? What will I expect to see? The purple horizontal line. line. Yeah, it'll become a horizontal line. So I'll do it to zero, and this will be a horizontal line, and the the value for for people with di for a new case of diabetes will be zero, and sort of identically down there, right? Um, if I were to set it to a very low value, let's say 10, nine, well, okay, 19, um, I meant to type 10, you could see it's still creeping up just uh, slower, right? It's got a slight upwards incline. Um, okay, so, so that's kind of nifty. We can go and, and change the value of this variable instead of hard coding it. But um, one of the foremost goals of these variables is we could set up different experiments and uh, different experiments can use different values for the parameter. You'll notice that each experiment here um, is, it can contribute a certain assumption about that parameter value, which can be different. So I could say, you know, uh, call this simulation baseline simulation, okay? And I could create another experiment here um, and call it, you know, um, uh, call it, you know, slow uh, incidence or, or call it, you know, uh, half, half incidence or something like that. Halved, halved incidence. It's kind of an interesting English word. Um, it, it's, it's halved. Um, and I could say this is 50, right? Um, and different, different scenarios then will elicit different behavior. And I can run them reproducibly. I can go and I could say, okay, run the half incident scenario with all the set of assumptions that are incumbent upon that. And, and go run that, come on. Um, and I can go run it out and I could compare it with what I get through the baseline. And this allows us to define these, um, these scenarios which are well-defined. And even as we evolve the model, we can rerun them in the context of the evolving model. Um, and, we, and we've secured that advantage as well by having this, um, this parameter, okay? Um, so uh, the parameter serves to encode the assumption, but it also serves as a means of communication of it from the scenario into where the parameter lives, which here is main, okay? Um, Okay, this is kind of administrative with any logic, but it, it, it's, it's handy for these experiments. Um, and we'll be seeing this. So we've seen, okay, here, this stock accumulates the value of the flow. This is an integral of that flow. If you ever see a stock where there's just one flow coming in, you know, that's just accumulating. And it's very common actually to see that. It, its job in life is just to accumulate it. So maybe with COVID-19, you'd have a stock of cumulative infections and it would just have one flow in, you know, that that's basically reflects it at any one time, the rate of infection. And its job will be to say how many people in Saskatchewan have ever gotten infected, which is exactly the sort of information that's posted on the PHAC website, the Public Health Agency of Canada website um, that's, that gives, you know, the updates for different provinces. Um, okay, so that's kind of nifty. This is a little integrator. Um, the derivative of the stock, its rate of change is given by the net flow, which is here just a flow, a single flow, and it serves as the integral of that, okay? Um, especially if it starts at zero, it'll be the, uh, uh, the net flow. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have a more interesting quarry um, because, you know, it's stretching imagination to say this is a dynamical system. Um, the notion of a dynamical system is something that has state, but where the evolution of that system depends, you know, the evolution over the next little bit depends on the current state. And the evolution of this system, for all its sound and fury, does not actually depend on the state. The, the value of the, the flow is independent of the state. It, we don't have a, the flow is not getting bigger as the stock is getting bigger. It's not getting smaller or anything. So, you know, to call this a, it, it's only a dynamical system 
ladies and gentlemen, in, and I'll use a technical math term for it, in a most degenerate sort, okay? Um, so, but it does illustrate the principle that it's accumulating uh, the value, okay? Um, now let's use, now let's go to something that's, that's more helpful and something that will get you to focus on this principle. The rate of change of the stock is given by the net flow. And under what conditions does it rise? Does it stagnate and does it drop? Well, it all depends on the relative value of the inflow and outflow or the, the net flow. Okay, um, so uh, let's go add in and an outflow. And the outflow unfortunately is going to have to reflect the fact that uh, diabetes is a lifelong uh, disease, except in the most extreme circumstance like the uh, uh, like cases where um, a population is has has very little access to food, uh, such as during the sugar embargo and um, in uh, in certain periods of uh, country's histories. So let's have um, uh, we'll have uh, deaths. Um, uh, we'll just call it deaths. Uh, okay, uh, or deaths of diabetics. Fine. Um, okay, now. Um, we're going to set this uh, at a rate that is um, is going to be fixed initially, and then we'll experiment on the the different the impact of the differential rate. So I'm going to say, uh, deaths of diabetes is fifty. Now I, I just said it's fifty. S some of you should should that should sit poorly with you. Why is it? Why, is it, why am I saying it should sit poorly if you, if I say deaths from diabetes is 50? Over time period. It's over time. And the question is over what period of time? Is it, is it 50 per year? Gosh, if Saskatchewan only had 50 people dying from diabetes a year, that's pretty good. Um, is it per second? That wouldn't be as good. Um, uh, you know, and, and so, to quantify, it doesn't make sense to just say it's 50. You actually need to be thinking it's, it's a rate. It's a something per unit time. Um, so, so this is 50 per month, and, and uh, therefore we phrase it as 50. That was part of our setting the time unit of this model to be 50. I told you it, it means what is one, but it also means what is one in, in terms of uh, a flow here. Uh, this is means one would be one per month if it's the value of a flow. So this is 50 per month, okay? Um, and uh, so we're specifying that. And now by so doing, we're gonna be able to look at the relative, the impact of the relative value of the inflow and outflow on the stock. Um, so um, here's our uh, baseline simulation. Uh, we're going to run that where the inflow is uh, by, by default 100 and the outflow is 50. What is the bathtub? What is your bathtub going to do if you have 100 liters per minute coming in? That's pretty good water pressure. And you have 50 liters per minute going out. Um, what's your bathtub going to do? Is it going to go up or down? The water in your bathtub, the amount of water in your bathtub, is it going to go up or down? Uh, up. It's going to go up because it's coming in faster than it's going out. Um, now, if we set this, what what value uh, would we need to set this to to have have the um, have the bathtub not change to have the number of people with diabetes be constant? Fifty. Yeah, fifty. It, the inflow has to equal the outflow, right? Um, so if we said fifty. Suddenly, we've stabilized the situation. Now, it's not that we've halved the number of people with diabetes by halving the inflow rate, not, nothing of that sort. We've just put into stasis. Um, suppose this were, were, you know, 25. What's going to happen then? Going to decrease. It's going to start decreasing, right? Yeah, and you see it; it's going down here. Um, and 
And that's because the inflow is less than the outflow, right? The water's going out of the bathtub faster than it's coming in. It's coming in at 25 liters a minute and it's going out at 50. So the relative value of the stocks of the, of the inflows and outflows into a stock, the net inflow and net outflow, the relative value is key for understanding why that stock is rising and falling. If the stock's rising, just as sure as the sun rises every morning, it means the inflow's got to be larger than the outflow. If it's falling, it means the outflow has got to be larger than the inflow. If it's equal, it means it's in balance. This is a key principle. And if you think this is, this is trivial, you may be surprised to hear that Lots of people miss that point and they think, well, you know, if we could only have the value of, of the inflow, you know, that should have the value of the stock. No, it just means it might not go up. It, maybe it starts coming down, it, it, but it doesn't mean you're going to have the value suddenly of the stock. It's, it's going to be trending downwards, perhaps, but you might have the, the value of this. I mean, after all, we could go back to its start here, right? I'm, I just press stop. Here it's it's 100, and I could have this thing, right? Um, again, back to 50, and I'm not going to suddenly magically transform the stock to you know be empty or to be one one half of its value. No, it's it's all about the relative value of the stocks and flows. And sometimes you may need to more than have by by divided by more than a factor of two the inflow to have the stock dramatically change its behavior, like be in stasis or decline. Believe me, people are, and, and I include myself, I include anyone. I mean, um, there's some great experiments done with MIT, you know, engineering, mathematics, uh, computer science, yes, graduate students, giving them examples like this. And, and reasoning in our head is terrible, but, but uh, if you use a simulation model, you can start to develop this intuition for things that will carry over. And it's one of these fallacies you hear again and again where people say, well, all we need to do is to, to decrease the, the inflow and we'll proportionately decrease the value of the corresponding stock. It's not that at all. We have to think about the outflow. We have to think about the relative values of the inflows and outflows. And we've do, done quite a bit of work for our government where, where basically this this essential point is at the root of some of the confusions. Um, okay, um, across different sectors of, of concern, um, criminal justice, uh, you look at ecology, you look at areas having to do with, um, with uh, infectious disease, chronic disease, et cetera. Okay, so stocks and flows, all going back to illustrate this principle. And I would note this last one is a particularly key one for what's coming up now, which is uh, the occurrence of feedbacks, because we're gonna be examining a type of feedback that wants this last case to be the case. It moves towards it. It, it, it seeks it out, a case where inflow equals outflow. It yearns for that case, okay? Um, and that sort of feedback that seeks balance. It seeks to restore the system to balance. It seeks stability and achieving stability where everything's in balance is what sort of feedback, ladies and gentlemen, speak as if you're in a Greek chorus. What sort of feedback will lead to that? Okay, lacking hearing a Greek chorus. Um, a negative. I've lost my Zoom. Yeah, it's a negative feedback. I'm, I'm, I've lost my Zoom, so I'm gonna have to pop back to my um, un, unfavorable visage. Okay, um, so um, I'm now going to, uh, yeah, it's a negative feedback. It's, it's a balancing feedback. It's very name connotes balance. And what sort of balance is it seeking? It's seeking, ladies and gentlemen, a balance between inflow and outflow across all states of the system. Okay, but particularly with the, with the uh, with the inflow um, and outflow associated with a, a particular stock. So let's go see that. After all, it'll be prettier than the site before you at the moment, okay? So here we go. Um, uh, okay, so we're, we're, we're going back into here and uh, you, you were in the fortunate, comparatively fortunate position of seeing my screen again. 
Okay, so we want to put in place um, something worthy of the name of a dynamical system. A dynamical system is a system where not only does the system have a state, this one has a state, but where the change in the system over the next little bit depends on the value of that state, which, which this system, for all the many virtues that recommend it, does not. It, it does, it's change over time does not depend on the state. So let's put in place a change which does depend on the state, okay? Um, okay, so we, we have these, um, these values. I'm gonna set this back to, to 10,000, okay, is the initial value here. Um, and something should bother you. Something should be sticking in your craw about those, that last example, particularly when we, when we frob the, um, uh, the inflow rate to be smaller than the outflow. Um, here, you know, we have a, an outflow of 50, an inflow of 100, it's accumulating. But if I were to set this to 25, for example, um, what is it going to do? If I set this to 25, is the stock going to go up or down? Down. 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 Yeah, because the outflow is greater than the inflow. Okay. Um, so here we go. And it's going down. But ladies and gentlemen, I show you this with trepidation. And I'm tempted to stop it right now. I'm tempted to stop it before what bad thing happened? What non-physical thing? It goes to zero. <laughs> you notice it's going negative. It's saying we have negative diabetics, negative 2,000, 3,000. Boy, is the ministry going to love this. Um, we have, our province is not only has low rates of diabetes, we have, we have negative number of people with diabetes. That, and that's not physical. That's not how physical systems work. Look, if there's fewer people with diabetes, you're going to have fewer deaths from diabetes, right? Um, so so let's, let's think this through. If we have 10,000 um, people here, um, maybe each of them is subject to a certain chance per, per month of, of, um, of developing diabetes, okay? Um, uh, and a certain chance per month of, of dying for diabetes. We're just gonna um, handle, handle the latter part of that, okay? Um, and I'm not going to use uh, actual statistics here, but I'm going to focus on, on teaching the principles. So I'm going to draw in another parameter. We know about parameters now. Parameters, ladies and gentlemen, are my friend. And I hope that they will be yours as well. OK. Um, uh, so, so we're going to have here a mortality rate. OK. Um, and if you want, you can, you can put a nice underbar with it. And I want deaths of diabetics to depend on this. So I need to satisfy the, the uh, dictates of the compiler. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna hitch up a link that basically says, hey, deaths from diabetics depend on this mortality rate. That's a useful convention. I kind of dissed it before. I kind of treat it like a nu nuisance, but the fact is it communicates things. It, it communicates to a stakeholder what depends on what which can be the basis for feedback on a model critique, et cetera. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we just hitched up deaths from diabetics here to our mortality rate. And I'm gonna set the mortality rate, its default value to be 0.01 per month. Okay, 1% chance per month. Uh, that's um, much more unfavorable than it actually is, but, but never mind. Um, okay. Um, mortality rate of, of 0.01, and we have deaths of diabetics here, okay? Um, but, okay, we've, we've hitched up the link, but it's full and sounded fury. It doesn't signify anything right now. It doesn't depend on it. After all, right now, it still says 50. And if you, you look, there's a little X there. It says, look, it's not used, but it's expected. It's saying, hey, don't forget that. Remember that. What's going on here? You say it's dependent, but there's no actual... There's no actual dependency of the formula, of the expression. So with malice of forethought, I'm going to actually go do something more here. I'm going to create a link because this is a mortality rate. Each person is subject to this mortality rate. Each of these 10,000 people initially, for example, are subject to this. So the number of deaths of diabetic in a given month will be this monthly mortality rate of 1% 
times the number of people with diabetes. If there's nobody with diabetes, zero people, then there's gonna be no deaths of diabetics. If there's a million people with diabetes, which would not please the Ministry of Health, um, there's a lot more people will be dying of diabetes than if there was only were only 10,000. So the number of deaths of diabetics here is going to be the mortality rate, mortality rate, not by itself. It's actually incommensurate units. It, it doesn't make sense. Mortality rate is a probability per year. It's a unit one over, sorry, per month, one over month. It wouldn't make sense to have deaths of diabetics, which is its units are people divided by months, people per month, in other words, that are coming in or leaving. Um, doesn't make sense to just use mortality rate. Instead, it's mortality rate times people with diabetes. Okay, so here we go. People, people, and I'll, I'll put it out there, people with diabetes. Now, any logic is doing me uh, uh, aesthetic um, disservice here. So uh, come on. Um, there you go. And for those who want to see it in bigger screen, uh, mumble. Um, uh, change the font and Kate uh, mumble mumble. Well, it's better than than Emacs in that regard. Uh, let's let's go call up uh, let's go call up get it or something. Um, oh no no I don't want to do that. Um, okay, uh, give me give me get it. Um, uh, oh man oh no I don't want to see a emoticons. <laughs> okay oh man um, okay I'm too used to 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 doing this elsewhere. Um, anyway, you, you could see it, right? It's mortality times people with mortality rate times people with diabetes. And I'll come up with a better solution. Maybe the Ubuntu text editor supports it better. Um, enlarging the font. Okay, so here we go. Mortality rate is probability per unit time, probability per month, like, so it's units one over month or fraction per month. One over month is its units times, times people is gonna give people per month, which is the units associated with a flow in or flow out of a stock of, of unit people. Okay, so let's, let's go look at this. Um, so I'm gonna say baseline simulation. Um, so here we go. And uh, guess what? Uh, I chose with malice of forethought mortality rate to be 1%, initial people with diabetes to be 10,000. You multiply those together, you get 100. And what's special about this 100 quantity? Why do we see this dynamic induced at the bottom? It's the same as the other 100. Yeah, yeah, it's the same as the other 100. The inflow is equal to the outflow. So it's not, it's not going up, it's not going down because you have a balance between the two. But what would happen? What would happen if we were to have a different starting point? Um, this, this is what I want you to, 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 to think about, okay? So, so ponder me this, riddle me this. If I were to change the number of people with diabetes initially to be 5,000 instead of 10,000, what do you think people with diabetes would do as a result? We still got a hundred people per time unit coming in. How many people do we have going out? If this is 5,000, we have a mortality rate of 0.01. We have 50 people die? per month going out. So what is people with diabetes gonna do? Is it gonna go up or down or stay flat? It's gonna it's climb gonna... back up to 10,000. Yeah, yeah, it's going to it's going to converge on ten thousand. Oh my gosh, uh, I didn't I didn't actually do it. Okay, um, so uh, how can I do this? Well, I can go frob it in the model, but I'm I'm actually gonna I'm gonna do a shortcut because I'm watching time. Watch this. Um, uh, you don't have to do this at home, but I'm I'm gonna say. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Stop. Pause. Pause. Okay. Boom. Um, I'm gonna change this to be five thousand. Okay, we, we dictate 5,000 people here. How did I do that? Uh, well, I clicked on this. I used this little little thing. Actually, you don't need to do that, sorry. 500, I just clicked on the number and I said 500, fine. 
it's setting to 500. So now if I do that, it will, this is, a, our, this is a, what's called a first order delay. This is a balancing feedback. Why do I say this is a balancing feedback? Anyone? Well, uh, the more people, yeah, yeah, speak on. I heard a voice. <laughs> speak on. Is it going to like equilibrium? Like it is going to equilibrium, and that's a hallmark of of balancing loops. But what is it that makes it balancing? Mechanistically, we talk about a balancing system of a negative feedback being associated where if we have a change to something, it ripples around and it pushes back against the direction of that change. Okay. So what's 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 the negative feedback here? That does not cause new cases of diabetes. Yeah, that's right. Um, so that's a that's a, a nice way to sort of pithily summarize um, this. So here we have we have a fixed number of people coming in with diabetes. If we lower the number of people with diabetes to five thousand, that's going to lower the the outflow to 50, it's not gonna change the inflow. So the net balance, we're still gonna have, we're, now we're gonna have more inflow than outflow. And that's gonna do what to the stock? We had lowered the stock to 5,000, but the fact that we have more inflow than outflow is gonna do what to the stock? It's going to, it raise it. Raise it, thank you, thank you. Someone, someone is, thinking clearly about it, or they're really good at reading my lips. Um, okay, so uh, here we go. Um, let's see if I could do this live. Yeah, yeah, 5,000, boom. Um, so if we do this and we accelerate time, we will see that it heads back to 10,000. It heads back to this equilibrium. And what what is it that distinguishes it as an equilibrium? What distinguishes it at this state and rest, at this balance. Why do I say it's balanced? Because what equals what? Inflow In, plus equals outflow. out. In, inflow equals outflow. It wants to get back there. It yearns for that. Let, let's go through it, right? I mean, um, suppose inflow is less than outflow, right? Um, um, suppose inflow is 50. Oh, sorry, outflow is 50. Inflow is 100 always, just assume that. Inflow is 100. Outflow is 50 per month, of course, in both cases, per month. Okay, uh, per unit time or generically. So suppose uh, we have inflow 50 per month and, and outflow, uh, sorry, inflow 100 per month, outflow 50 per month. What is gonna happen that is going to move it towards the state of balance? What's gonna happen? Yeah, it will increase. Yeah, the value of the stock will go up. And guess what happens when the value of the stock goes up? Sonia said it earlier. What happens? The value of the stock goes up, and what will happen as a result? Will the value of the inflow change? The yeah, inflow won't change, no. but the outflow will the, go up. The out, out, value of the outflow will go up uh, as well, right? Um, and so the stock has gone up. It's gone towards 10000 but as the value of the outflow goes up, the stock will continue to, to rise, but it will rise slower and slower. And it will tend to approach a situation where the two are equal, right? So I'm gonna set this again to, gosh, I'll set it to zero, right? Whoa, and it's going up to 10,000 um, uh, because what's going on is it's zero initially, that means there's tons more people coming in that are leaving. It's going to start rising really quickly. And that's going to then start driving the number of people who are dying from diabetes higher. Um, and that is going to make the imbalance less grievous. And uh, so now we have, well, if that could be called grievous, we have uh, people with coming in with more people coming in per month than we have leaving per month. But, but as the stock goes up, the number of people leaving per month is creeping up as well. It's getting closer to the number of people coming in per month. 
and it will keep on rising the out the the stock, and then the outflow will keep on rising until the to the point where outflow equals inflow. And at that point, the value of the stock won't go up anymore because it's in stasis. So the value of the stock will be imbalanced because of this. It'll be constant. The inflow is equal to outflow. Water is coming in just as fast as it's going out. And as a result, it will pause there. Um, it will it will not go up and it won't go down. It will be in balance where inflow equals outflow. Let's try the reverse. Let's let's try the reverse. Let's suppose that for our baseline simulation, instead of having um, ten thousand people, we had with diabetes initially, we had twenty thousand. Eh, let's let's run it out for a bit. After all, sorry, it's it's in balance. I'm going to speed it up. Um, here we go, it's in balance, right? You know, kind of what's going on. Let's suppose we change this to 20,000. What's gonna happen then? If we change this to 20,000 people with diabetes, what's gonna happen? 200 Mechanism. people die a month. Yeah, more people per month uh, are going to die. And in fact, it'll be more people dying per month than our- Inflow? In, than the value of the inflow. So what will that tend to do? It will tend to decrease, decrease the, stock. the value, the stock, the value of the stock will decrease over time. It'll be brought down. It'll be brought down successively. And that bringing it down will lower a little bit the value of the outflow. Um, but the outflow will still be greater than the inflow. So it's bringing it down further and it will keep on declining until what? Inflow equals Total. outflow. Until inflow equals outflow. So here we go. I just set it to 20,000 and it's declining. It's declining slower and slower. Why is it declining slower over time? At first it was declining faster, but now it's declining slower. The difference between inflow and outflow is yeah. smaller? Yes, yes. Remember the rate, the rate of change the of the rate. stock, how quickly it's going up or down is given by the net flow. And the net flow is going down because the the outflow is getting closer to the inflow. The outflow over time as the stock's value is dropping, the outflow's value is dropping and it's getting closer to the inflow. And so it's gonna keep on going until it gets down to what magic value? 10,000. 10,000 where it's in balance, it's in equilibrium. The inflow is equal to the outflow. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a negative feedback loop. This is a, a, a balancing loop. As we increase this factor, number of people in the stock, it'll lead to a change of outflow that will tend to ripple around and push back against the magnitude of that, that original change. It'll tend to lower it compared to where it otherwise would have been if the outflow hadn't been modified. Okay, um, and uh, it's a it's a balancing loop. It's a it's a loop that gravitates towards stability. It seeks balance. It seeks stability. Okay, um, so so that's a little bit on um, inflows and in outflows. Okay, now I'm um, searching my slides. Okay, um, now we didn't talk really about textured dynamics here of, of inflows and outflows. Uh, but in your assignment for those who um, uh, wish to um, accept it, um, you, you actually have some examples which involve uh, reasoning about inflows and outflows that are a bit more textured. So you might have an inflow, for example, here um, that um, is, is rising over time, um, that's the red, and then declining over time. And you might have an, an outflow, which is fixed. And you'll notice that the value of the stock will, will reflect those dynamics in the inflow and outflow, but in a way that, that uh, reflects the, the accumulation semantics, the fact that it's accumulated the net flow so initially, the value of the stock, which is shown in green, again, inflow is red, outflow is blue. The value of the stock is in green. Why is the stock going down initially? Why is it going down to about 
here, time 25? Uh, because the outflow is above the inflow uh, curves. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, the the outflow is above the inflow. And if you have more water going, if going out faster from your bathtub than you have coming faster than it's coming in, the bathtub is going to decline in value. So the value of the stock is going to decline. Now, at this point, what's so special about time 25? Why does it stop decreasing there? Why is it? Yeah. When inflow is greater than outflow. Uh, so, yeah, it stops being uh, in a situation where outflow is greater than inflow and they cross. Oh, and sorry. at this magical moment where the red crosses the blue, what is the net change in the flow? Or, sorry, the net change in the stock is what? It's zero. Was zero at it's that zero. Point. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't decline anymore. It doesn't go up. It doesn't go down. It's in stasis, right? But then, um, uh, then here we have inflow continuing to rise, and outflow is, is always staying constant. So, what's going to happen then to the stock? If if inflow here is greater than the outflow, as you see it, it that it is, is the stock going to go up, down, or stay the same? In value? Start going up. Start going up. Why is it going up? faster over time like why is it going up kind of slow here and then it picks up pace over here if the red is inflow and the blue is outflow why is it going up faster the stock rising faster because the uh, inflow is increasing. greater greater difference yeah, yeah. um so there's a greater and greater disparity because the inflow exceeds the outflow by more and more. So in short, the value of the net flow, which is after all what dictates the rate of change of the stock, whether it's how quickly it's going up or quickly it's going down, that the value of the net flow, which dictates the rate of change of the stock uh, is rising. We have a bigger and you know fast, the water coming into the tub is, faster and faster, the water going out of the tub is going no faster. And so we have this bigger and bigger imbalance. Um, and so the water in the tub is gonna rise faster and faster, right? Um, what's going on uh, here at this, at this peak in the inflow? Um, now the inflow is gonna start going down. Why doesn't the stock go down here at this uh, point? Because the inflow is still higher than the outflow. The inflow is still higher than the outflow. So. So you may be decreasing the inflow, but that doesn't mean the stock's going to go down. It just means the imbalance is going to be less egregious. So the stock will rise from then on slower, slower. slower uh, than it would have if we had stuck at that level, right? Um, it's going to start slowing down. When is the stock going to be flat again? When is the stock not going to go up or down over time again for a little bit? When is it going to be uh, constant? When the inflow and outflow. Yeah, when the inflow is equal to the outflow again. Until that time, the stock will be rising. Notice I talk about inertia here. Like we're, we're lowering this. You may think like if we're lowering the number of, 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 of cases per day with, with COVID, the new, the new cases diagnosed, think inflow. Um, why doesn't that mean our number of people in the hospital is going down? No, it, it depends. It's not just a matter of how many new cases come in. It's, it's the outflow, right? It's how long people have to stay in the hospital. Um, as long as the inflow is greater than the outflow, the number of people in the hospital with COVID is going to be going up. Um, so you can't think that you immediately translate a reduction in inflow in whatever sphere of life into reduction in the value of a stock. That's that's sloppy thinking. It's 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 uh, it's sloppy thinking to which our wetware is all too adapted. It's all too used to thinking about it that way. But um, it it you know in fact systems depend on the semantics of 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 uh, accumulation of of net flow, and so you have to bring it down to a certain point before it will actually start going down. Now why is it going down? faster and faster here. Why is it, why is it accelerating its downwards um, trajectory here? 
because the inflow is decreasing at a faster or faster compared to the outflow. Yeah, so the, the inflow is in more of a deficit compared, it's, it's getting more and more low. It's the difference between the inflow and the outflow is getting larger and larger. The inflow is getting smaller and smaller and smaller relative to the outflow. So the, the outflow is gonna dominate and that's gonna be lowering the value of that stock. Um, and it's gonna lower it quite small. So these are, these are the points you should be able to match. Like to know the value of the stock gonna go, when is it gonna be in stasis? Just look for the, when the two cross. Um, at this peak of inflow, that doesn't mean it's the peak and the value of the stock. This is another common misperception, right? That, oh, we, we say, oh, we're past the peak. Well, past the peak in what, ladies and gentlemen? If it's the pack and peak and in inflow along, um, that, that doesn't mean it's going to be the peak in the stock. If, if, you know, the number of new cases has peaked, that doesn't mean our hospital wards will be now going down. No, no, no. Um, it's, again, the relative, relative value of these things, okay? Um, so in general, ladies and gentlemen, in these models, system dynamics model, dynamical systems models, how the system changes over the next little bit depends on the current state of the system. And here, stocks are, are, are always changed by flows, but often flows uh, are, are depend on the values of the stocks. And, and that's what we've seen here. Um, and I've shown another example. And there's two ways to phrase this that we'll be talking about uh, uh, quite a bit next time. Okay, um, one is we could phrase uh, as we did here, a mortality rate, okay? And that's a chance per unit time that someone who's in the stock, in this case, it's a someone, um, uh, will leave per unit time. So in our case, it was a per month probability that they left, okay? Um, uh, alternatively, we could talk about a mean amount of time, the average time they're in there. Think like average time someone spends in the hospital before being discharged for COVID-19. And it turns out that you can go back and forth between these, these two and, and the, the dimensions of them. And indeed the units are inverses of each other. But let me first, um, so you can phrase it in either way here a mean time in this or a, a chance per unit time of advancing from this. One is just the reciprocal of the other. Um, uh, so we call these constructs first order delays when the outflow depends linearly on the inflow. By linear, I mean it's, it's just some constant, in this case, a mortality rate times the value of, of the stock uh, out of which it flows, the stock whence it comes. Um, so uh, a first order delay has this balancing feedback in it. And these balancing feedbacks are extremely common because for the reason we articulated earlier, if there isn't anyone in the population, you don't expect anyone to leave. And so whenever you have a physical quantity that can't go negative, that you know can't go below zero, you need a balancing feedback of some sort. And, and quite commonly, it's just a, a negative feedback, a first order delay like this, as, as it's called. Okay. Um, and we said the larger the value of the stock, the faster the value of the outflow. And, and that will lead it to kind of want to pull it down faster or faster if, if outflow is, is greater than inflow. Um, or if inflow is greater than outflow, um, a, a higher value for the outflow will, will tend to mean it's, it's rising less quickly. Um, a first order delay strives towards equilibrium. It yearns for equilibrium um, uh, where the inflow equals the outflow and the value of the stock stays constant. Why does the stock stay constant? Because inflow equals outflow. Um, why is the inflow equal to the outflow? Well, in this case, the outflow depends on the value of the stock. If the inflow is bigger than the outflow, the stock's value will go up because inflow is greater than outflow and the outflow will go up until the two are equal. If the stock's value is too high, the outflow will be greater than the inflow. The value of the stock will be drawn down because the outflow is greater than the inflow and it will be drawn down until such point as the outflow equals the inflow. 
So it just yearns for this. It desires it. It seeks it. It seeks this balance. Um, and uh, it's worth understanding it. Now, this is called a first order delay because it's associated with uh, the delay um, in terms of how long things are, are in this, uh, this stock. It's also associated with the delay here. You can see it. The peak of this is not going to be the peak of this. Um, often this is delayed quite a bit because the, the value of the, uh, uh, of the inflow has to get down to, uh, uh, to the value uh, to, to a state of balance. But even more so, if we were to have a sudden change um, in the value of the inflow, we will see a change in the value of the outflow but it'll be uh, delayed over time. And um, I'm gonna need to stop here in just a moment, but I'll ask you to, to watch this uh, uh, for a moment with me. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, go and immediately pause this. I'm going to set this to be zero, okay? Um, and uh, well, what the heck, uh, I'll set it, I'll leave it at, at 10,000, that's fine for my purposes. Okay, we're running this is in perfect balance because outflow equals inflow. Now, suppose I set this and mark my words, I'm gonna set it at time 10. There we go, okay, time 10. Um, and I'm gonna set it to 20,000. Um, it will adjust to this, but it will adjust to it with a delay, right? Um, so I, I set it to 20,000. What's the effect of that gonna be? Well, the effect is it's going to be to increase the value of the outflow, and that will tend to decrease or, or will it tend to have the stock go up or down over time. If I double this from 10,000 to 20,000, that increases the value of the outflow to be 200 rather than, than 100 initially, and will the stock be going up or down? Down. Down. Down, yeah, down. That's a sign of approval, but it's a sign of, and it's going in in a negative uh, direction here. So it's gonna tend to, to decrease and it will accommodate this. It will adjust to it, but adjust to it over time. It, it, it adjusts over only over some prolonged time, which here will be associated with a time constant of one over 0.01 or, or 100 months. It'll tend to, to it, go through most of its adjustment. Um, if I, were to lower this, and I'm gonna uh, restore this to its normal rate. If I were to lower it uh, or, or set this to be 2000, and I were to have a higher mortality rate, let's suppose a rate of 10% uh, instead of, oh, 20%, let's say 10% instead of 1%. Now it will adjust, uh, but it will adjust much more quickly, okay? Um, it will, it will uh, adjust to its new situation more quickly, more sharply. Uh, it's associated with a lower delay associated with it, okay? Um, so these first order delays are key building blocks and we're going to explore them more, ladies and gentlemen, in our uh, fair company um, during our, our next session here. Okay, I've overextended my time and no doubt my welcome um, we will be initiating office hours in another five minutes for those who may, um, may wish to uh, partake of them. Uh, in the meantime, we'll have a break for five minutes and I will see you here shortly. What I think I will do in the interest of getting the video up is I'll ask your accommodation. Um, the video is actually not saved and I can't post it to YouTube until after this session ends. So 